Recently, I put out a very short film, if you can even call it that, called In Flames. Now, for me, the whole point of making it was to see if I could pull off a believable visual effect shot with fire. It was more of a proof of concept challenge than anything else. Now, the majority of my work as a filmmaker is in directing music videos, so a shot like this isn't really out of the question at all, but I've never done it, and so I wanted to see if I could make it look okay. So instead of just filming the house engulfed in flames, I decided we may as well grab a couple clips to kind of build up some sort of backstory. So first things first, I, I called up my buddy Andrew to see if he wanted to be my guinea pig, and he was immediately down to set somebody's house on fire. Next, I hit up Elias and Zane to see if we could actually use his house to set on fire, and from there, we had a plan. What's up, guys? I'm here with this sweater. It's dope. <laughs> Today, we get to burn down Zane's house. Yeah, I didn't been... need it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Elias over here hanging out on his... I got this denim jacket from Elias. For the shots leading up to the fire scene, I had Andrew do a couple actions, like packing a bag, dowsing the house with gasoline, uh, and then exiting the house. So. Really, the first use of lighting we had was I, we used this uh, Aperture RGB LED light, and I had Elias hold that light at a slight down angle outside, like down across the porch to act as a fake moonlight, um, which kind of helped with the whole atmosphere, as well as giving a bit of fill to Andrew's face because of how dark it was out there. But let's just go ahead and jump right into the fire shot breakdown. I set a tripod up at a low angle, and I had Andrew stand in front of it. Now, the biggest challenge in finding the right composition was finding a frame that didn't have a bunch of trees and bushes in it where they were kind of obscuring parts of the house. And I m mostly just really didn't want to do just a ton of rotoscoping, like rotoscoping out thousands of tiny little branches. So once we found a good composition, it was time to get Andrew in front of the camera. Now, Elias held the aperture light up in front of Andrew um, where I couldn't see him, right? I couldn't see Elias at all. And we had it on the fire preset to give it like this realistic orange glow and we we got that shot then we had andrew move we got a clean plate of just the house and then after that we got a clean plate of just the sky uh because the clouds were moving really fast and i didn't want to have a weird thing where clouds were jumping around based on what the clean plate was so once we had those clean plates we moved on to lighting the scene so i had elias hold the firelight against the left side of the house and he was like tucked away hidden behind this bush so we would shoot that till the house was lit for probably 10 or so seconds and then from there he just kind of jumped around and like lit all different parts of the house in the yard to give some sort of like light motivation for where the fire would flicker if it were to like you know if it was a real fire so once we got the clips it was time to take it into after effects now the first thing i did was to stitch all the pieces together which was really simple it was just cutting out sections um a footage where the house was lit and then feathering them a ton the most tedious part of the entire project was rotoscoping Andrew's subtle movements, like his head movements, shoulder movements, hand movements. They're really subtle, but it was enough to where it took a lot of frame-by-frame -frame rotoscoping. And in hindsight, to save a lot of time, I will. I, I wish I would have done like a green screen. So in the future, I might test that out and try using a green screen for his plate and then shooting the rest the same way. So once the image looked balanced, it was time for the VFX. So my brother and I sat down with some of the fire and smoke assets from Action Essentials 2 and started compositing. We started with the fire placement, choosing to light the yard on fire first, and then we cut out a window and put in more flame. From there, it was just a guess and check placement to see what looked okay, really, uh, a lot of guess and check. We ended up settling on the roof, uh, setting the roof on fire and adding some flame to the left windowsill as well. Once all the fire assets were placed, we decided to add in some damage assets to simulate burning and destruction along the side of the house. Um, once we got the assets in the shot, we, we just masked them out. We really, for the finishing touch, we duplicated the house plate and masked particular areas out. Um, and we would, we would use that to create like a fake flicker. So we would increase and decrease the brightness to help like sell the effect even more. Um, and what we would do is we would watch frame by frame as the fire grew, we would make the wall brighter. And as it dimmed, we would also dim the walls. So that's basically the process we did over and over again. And then finally, at the very end, we added in some smoke elements. So it was really fun bringing this little project to life from troubleshooting the entire thing to, to lighting it and trying to play with the fire assets and the original plates, whatever. So if you end up trying this yourself, let me know how it goes. Uh, and if you want to keep in touch or see any more of my work, hit me up on Instagram at Mikey Graff and let me know if there are any other effects or tutorials or whatever else you want to see. Um, I'd love to put it out. So thanks for watching. Peace.